I'm Hamish Ward and I'm a third year sound engineering student at the University of Salford. Tonight I'm working with Cadence Noir who describe themselves as a UK goth folk and roll band and they're playing in the venue Grand Central in the city centre of Manchester. I'm currently writing a dissertation titled Optimal Microphone Selection Is the Industry Standard Always the Best Option? My previous experience with ASA microphones had been mainly studio use, but as of recently, I've been seeing them used more in live and have used them myself as drum overheads. When presented with the opportunity to use the Aston range in a live environment, I wanted to see if it was possible to use these microphones outside of a studio environment and see if they lived up to their reputation. So I started by setting up the kick drum microphone I chose to only do a kick drum out because I was lacking channels and I got the sound that I required from it anyway. I used the stealth microphone on the V2 setting recommended to me by Rich from Aston Microphones and by using the V2 setting I was able to capture the full frequency of the kick drum from the low end to a crisp high end. I chose to use the element microphones for the toms was worried about feedback being an issue, but I was pleasantly surprised with the result of the microphones and the extremely quiet output and Casio polar pattern allowed me to achieve the sound that I wanted and reduce spill. Microphone placement was a bit of an issue for the toms, as I only had big stands available, so I just had to trial and error with the angles of the stands until I got the microphones into the correct position. So I chose to use the Acid Spirit as my drum overhead and I chose this because of the frequency response and the option to play with different polar patterns like cardioid and omnidirectional. I chose to only use one drum overhead because of the lack of channels, the mic stands I had available and the lack of space on stage. And eventually I ended up using a Hercules mic stand as it allowed me to balance the microphone above the cymbals that were already very high up. The Spirit also has a fair bit of weight to it, so it wasn't easy to balance this microphone and keep it from sagging, but eventually I got it into the perfect position with help from Dave the drummer. So Rich recommended to me to use the Stealth microphones in G mode for the guitar cabs. I started by trying to find the dust cap in the centre of the driver using the torch on my phone, and I positioned the Stealth on axis at the side of the dust cap. Positioning the first microphone was fine, but the second one I had a slight issue just due to the lack of space on stage. I was just trying to keep the microphone out of Nick the guitarist's way, which was a bit of a challenge, but I managed to eventually still place it directly on the driver. So I DI'd the bass guitar because traditionally you wouldn't mic a bass guitar amp in a venue of this size, as it just wouldn't achieve the sound that I was looking for. I also DI'd Emma the violinist because she had a wireless system which made more sense to use in this scenario. This also gave her the freedom to move around on stage, whereas if she was mic'd up she would have to stay static. However, if I was to record a violin in the studio, an Origin would be the perfect microphone to capture this sound with. Rich gave me the opportunity to test out the brand new Apex handheld microphone. It's a dual voice microphone, but I used it on the Voice One settings. The Voice One setting is a very mid-forward, classic dynamic sound, and it's what you'd expect from a high-quality handheld microphone. It has phantom power boost capabilities that give you a 20 dB boost, with a very low signal-to-noise ratio, but I didn't feel the need to use this as I was able to achieve the sound that I wanted without it in the venue. I was impressed with the lack of feedback due to the head shell rejecting spill and acting as a barrier to prevent unwanted noise. I've plugged everything into the venue's Behringer X32 Compact using the 16 channel snake. I then went around to the front house position to test the levels using the X32 app on an iPad. We sound checked and went straight in for a performance, but Adrian politely reminded me to press record just as the performance started. I had an image in my head that it was going to be a feedback nightmare, but it helped that I only had to put vocal and violin in the monitors for the band. I was pleasantly surprised that there was no feedback issues, but I was really happy with the performance and they sounded really good. In a live environment such as this small venue, you don't have much time to set up like you would in a studio, 
but the mics performed well regardless of not having much time to play around and I was really happy with the sound. I had good fun and it was a great opportunity to play with a bunch of new microphones and experiment. I've just noticed something rather important. Hamish, press record on the fucking Mac. <laughs> now the fast bit. Intertwined. We'll live how we want if you can't, and we don't care if you go barking on about vegan sausage rolls. Tell me what we hate. Do I can't we play like we used to? We're all in the park. Cause when you're young, there's no color. Difference are another, only to mother too loud. So tell me why must we say there's another new today? While the laws will calm them last day. You see, we are where I stand. It's all that same point where we began from out of love. So tell me why must we hate? Tell me why can't we play like we used to when we were all, all in the park? Good evening, Grand Central! Is it sounding good, my friends? You might actually get paid tonight, Hamish, we'll see. Spark us up, Dave! <laughs> 